Howdy. How's everybody out there in YouTube band today? Have we all got our glue guns on? Have we all got our crafts going on our tables? I told you yesterday in the tutorial I did on the paper roses that I would be doing a tutorial on these guitar picks. Now I've got several ways that I do the guitar picks and I'll try to go over them here with you to show you how to do this. It is a fairly simple process. You just have to have patience. Um, and most anybody that's doing crafts has patience to work on them. And you can see by the look at my board here, you can see the paint all over it. <laughs> but this paint's dry paint, so it's not like I'm going to get all marred up with it. Let's see here. Um, I will start off with, I showed you some of these on Facebook the other day that I had made up. Now, these are kind of medi medium, uh, you know, as far as what uh, what went into doing them. And I'll try to line some of them up here so you can see them there on the, on the camera. And now I'm dropping them all over. Let's see. Get them lined up. It's a guitar pick that I have painted. And I painted these with nail polish. That is time consuming because you got to paint them, then you got to let them dry. Then you got to go back over and put the second coat on and let them dry. And then you have to flip them over and do two coats letting it dry in between so that is the time consuming part before i get to painting them though i've got to poke a hole in them you take a guitar pick and you poke a hole in it and you can see there where i poked a hole now there's all kinds of ways to do it you got to be careful doing it though or you will crack the guitar pick guitar picks come in different thicknesses and you have to keep that in mind some of them are thin some of them are thicker some of them are medium so you have to be careful what you're using. Some people just use a little tiny drill bit and go at it slow, you know, and put them in that way, or you use a Dremel on them. But if you're using a Dremel, you gotta be careful because you will crack that guitar pick. Um, I have used, let's see, I lined up some things here earlier to show you ways to do it. I use a um, tool that looks hole in them and I use the smallest one in there you see that right there I use the smallest bit in the leather punch and you got to just go at it real easy when you're punching that hole through them or you will crack them so it's something it just takes a little bit of patience you can go at them with a with an exacto knife if you want to but there again be careful you don't cut yourself messing with them because you can slip off that slick plastic but that's what they look like you get them to lay a little nicer here for you and then i put um, after they get all good and dry i put the charms to them however i want to do them you can see some of them i put some lace or uh, appliques just little pieces that i had from other projects put that on there and then i put a charm on jump rings some I put the little keys and the gears on. They will like steampunk kind of stuff. So that gives you an idea on how to do the little guitar picks. You know, one, I got a little wooden heart there that I painted red. And uh, now that's one way to do them. The way that I have been working on today is a little bit different. Anybody who has acrylic nails knows that you get this acrylic nail dust and you can get it in all kinds of colors or you can just get it in clear i'm here of different colors of this i don't know i don't remember if i got this at sally's or if i got it off amazon i'm thinking probably sally's beauty supply but um i got a kit of this and it is the this powder that you put on your nails with the uh, use the monomer to set it up and I wanted to paint one of them here and show you how I do this. Because I don't do it like I do my nails. My nails, I want slick. 
with the guitar picks, I want to have a little bit of um, texture to them. And get one of them up here and see if you can see the texture to that. Now that's after I've sanded it. So you know that they've had more texture than that before I sand them. And you need this stuff, they call it a monomer. And that's M-O-N, let's see, it doesn't say it on this bottle, does it? This one says professional liquid, um, liquid professional, it's like three different languages on here. It's by Supernail, but it is, um, actually it's a what they call a monomer, M-O-N, O-M-E-R, I think is how it's spelled, monomer. And you put it in a glass bowl. You don't want to put it in plastic, just a little bit of it. doesn't take much for doing these. It's not like you're trying to give yourself a manicure with it. And be in a well-ventilated room because this stuff stinks. If you've ever gone into a uh, nail salon, you've smelled this stuff. And then I take my paintbrush and I make sure that my fibers are all moving in it but it isn't a stiffened up brush because you're not going to get anywhere with one stiffened up i take my guitar pick i sand it off the logo and stuff on the one side of it i wet it down just a little bit wiped it down so it got the dust off of it and then i take my brush and i get it good and wet in that monomer solution Get your paper towel at the ready there in case you need to wipe any of it off. But I get it good and wet. Then I take my paintbrush and just dip it through that. Just scoop up a little bit of the monomer all, or the, the powder on your monomer brush. And then I hold it a second there and let the monomer get into the powder. Then I start streaking it over that guitar pick. I like the guitar pick to be tape down because I don't want it moving around on me. You don't want it slipping and sliding while you're trying to do this. I get a little bit more wet on the brush. I come back and I dip it through that again and let it soak up through powder. I don't know if you can see that change of colors there on the camera or not, but it changes colors as it gets wet, it gets lighter. And I just stripe that there on this, this is uh, Miss Shelley's pity pat here, <laughs> where I pity pat it to the to the guitar pick. Anybody that watches Crafted Mamas knows who Shelley is and knows why we call her pity pat. And that's plenty wet there, so this time I'll just get the powder on my brush. Give it a second to soak up a little bit. It's not soaking up much. I use most of my, my monomer on my pick. So then we pat that in. When you pat it in and it's kind of dry, if you can see there, yeah, you can see where it's lighter, that's the dry powder. And I'm just patting that in to the monomer that's on the pick. And that's what's giving it the texture. And you want some texture to it. Then I'm going to go back. I'm going to get some more monomer on my brush. I'm just going to kind of dab that on that dry powder. Now you can do this, build it up as much as you want. I don't like them built up a whole lot because when I go to sanding, I want, I don't want a slick surface, but I want it down. Let's see, I can explain this by showing you. I want it down enough that when I glue my objects to the guitar pick that it's a smooth enough surface it's going to hold them but it's still going to show some texture underneath whatever i put on there or around the edges depending upon what i put on it and get a little bit more powder put it up here around the upper edges and around the sides get a little bit more monomer to wet that so that it sets up but your powder won't set up without the monomer in it and i see a spot kind of there in the, the center of it where i'd like to go back in and put a little bit more so i'm going to get a little bit more on my brush 
and tap that in. You do it till you're satisfied with it. And keep in mind, it's not going to look like this when it dries. It's a, it's going to be a surprise when it dries. You're going to say, well, how did that happen? That didn't look like it was when it was wet. Then, when I get all done, you clean your brush. And you don't wait all day to do it. You clean your brush right away because you don't want that acrylic to set up in your paintbrush. You ruin your paintbrush that way. And I really, really clean it. And I use the monomer. There is, uh, you can... You can use um, brush cleaners for these acrylic nails, but I find the monomer cleans it just as good because it liquefies whatever is in your brush. Then once you get it good and wet and you beat the tar out of it there on the bowl, you take it to a paper towel and you go to just rubbing it and striping it back and forth across that paper towel and you want it to be good and clean. You take a finger and run over it. Make sure you don't feel any more monomer or any more uh, powder in that. Any acrylic. You want to clean it and just pull everything out the end of the brush. Make sure your brush is clean. Unless you want, are using a disposable brush, but if you're doing very many of these guitar picks this way, you got to clean them between doing the... Uh, different colors and you'll go through a pile of paintbrushes in a hurry you're just going to throw them out and that still feels a little sticky to me so i'm going to dip it again you don't want to feel any stickiness to that brush that's very important to keep your tools clean because if you're like me and don't have a lot of money you may be on i'm on fixed income or uh Maybe you're not making a lot of money at your job. You can't afford to keep buying your tools over and over again. You want to get them good and clean. Now, I have been known to give a paintbrush a haircut. You know, you just trim down the very, very edges of it. If it gets dry and it's just, you know, on the very end of it gets stiff. You don't. You can't do that very often because they don't grow back. But <laughs> I have been known to do that. I didn't get it out of the very tips. And then you set it up someplace to dry. And I'll put it in my little handy dandy stand that I got my camera tripod in over here. And then you put your lid back on your powder so you don't knock it off the table and make a big mess. Ask me how I know that. Now, when I set these to the side, you may notice over here, you see some of them. Uh, I, I set them bottom side up so I can see what colors I've got. Because if you set them top side up, so all you're going to see is that black lid. And that way... You have them sit there so that you know what you got when you're working on this and you're doing a bunch of different colors. Now that one, I'll peel up off of the table and set it to one side. Now, you can do that over and over again if you feel so inclined, you want to build it up. I don't do the backs when I'm doing them this way. Um, that's, let's see, it's got tape on it. Here's one. It's, see, I didn't do the back. I may paint that before it's done with uh, some nail polish, but right now i haven't done anything to the back on these now i'll show you how we decorate these well first before i do that once that's dry i'm going to sand it i use an emery board a nice coarse emery board like you use on your acrylic nails you can use sandpaper i find sandpaper is a little hard to deal with you can use a Dremel. There's all kinds of bits for Dremels that you can use. Unless I'm trying to etch a design in them or etch out sections in them if they're just too smooth to suit me, I usually do not mess with a Dremel tool on these. But I wanted to get it out to show you, you know, things that you can do with them. You can Put initials in them if you're real fancy you can use an engraving tool on this uh, acrylic it, it, you know these these nails i mean they're good and hard you can put these acrylic nails all day and they ain't going nowhere you really you, you have to actually like hit them with a hammer or do something really awful to break good acrylic nails now after i get them sanded down 
I take just a dab of water on a, a paper towel and I wipe them off or spritz them with your spray bottle or something, wipe them off to get the, the dust off of them. Then I paint them. I use these pearlescence um, polishes, depending upon what color. Now this green one back here, I used the, the pearlescent green on. And you can see how that shined it up. And you got the texture from the acrylic on there. Really makes it look old. Makes it look distressed. And shines it up a little bit with the polish. And you can get these little bottles of nail polish at Walmart for practically nothing. And you don't use but a dab of it on these things. So it lasts a long time. Then once I get them pearlized, I can go to paint them. Um, I've got some of these paint pens. I've got a black one, a white one, and a red one. And these are really cool. I know I got these at Sally's. So, um, you know, if you uh, go to Sally's Beauty Supply, it's this one's called um, C-I-N-A Black Nail Art Pen. And this is a white one, and this is a red one. And if I can show you here. You just dab the point of it up and down until you get the paint flowing. And then you can paint over the top of them. Um, and you stripe them. You fill in the little holes. Here's one, this orange one, I did with a little bit of black. And I just kind of striped it on there. And then once that was on, I wiped it down real quick with a paper towel to streak it. Then it was still just a little bit too much black for me. So I took some yellow pearlized nail polish and put over top of the black to tone it down just a little bit. And it didn't detract from the orange because once I put the yellow on, I took a paper towel and I wiped the yellow down to strike it a little bit. And that that's um, very reminiscent of what we used to do back in the old days when we were antiquing furniture. You put one coat of paint on your base paint and you let it dry and then you go back in with a lighter color and you put it on and then you wipe it down and uh, stripe the furniture up to make it look old and distressed and that's sort of what I did with this one here just to distress it and make it look old then once you get the paint dry and I, I leave them set uh, overnight or you know, through the day and come back in the evening or, you know, whenever I'm working on them, I give them several hours to dry good. And there again, I've got the tape on the back, so it ain't going to go nowhere when I start working on it. For the, the ones that I did in the uh, package there that I showed you a little while ago that were just painted, I just take the guitar pick, I take a little bit of tape, I'll put a first coat on this one just to show you what I do with it. This is a black one. And is that going to show up on camera? Yes, it is. That's That looks good. You can see that good. All right. I take a black one, and then I just uh, pick whatever color paint I want to use on it. It's easier if you take something that is the same color as the guitar pick or close to it. And I'm going to use black. I'll take some black polish, and I'm just going to paint that on And you can put a nice thick coat on because you're going to let it dry until it's good and dry. You're not going to rush this process because if you do, you're going to stripe up your paint job. Just like with your nails, you've got to give them time to dry when you paint them. And it's the same with these guitar picks. You just let them dry good. I'll put a nice thick coat of paint on there. And it's going to shine real pretty. And once you get them all painted the way you want them painted up, if you're just going to do it this way, if you take a little alcohol on a cotton swab and rub over them, oh, it makes them shine. It brings out the color of that polish and just shines real pretty. But they got to be dry before you can do that. Spot center. I want a little extra paint on there. So there you go. There's one painted up. And I know black on black while well, you're saying, ah, I hope that's right. Yes, it is right because I'm right here at it and I can see it. Okay. 
Uh, getting back to these ones, this this one I put the uh, some um, lavender pearlized nail polish on and wiped it down. Uh, this one I put some green pearlized nail polish on it and wiped it down, and uh, so you can see the the green acrylic through it and you can see the pearlized paint there shining it up. So I've got those three that I can decorate. Now I use super glue on these because they're going to be worn and you want them to hold up when people are wearing them and beating around around their necks or on bracelets or whatever you want them to stay put and so I use a little bit of super glue to put my charms on and I got this little metal one here and you don't want no big globs of, of hot glue or anything on them. Now, when you put your charm on, make sure you don't cover your holes up where you've got to put your jump ring in. I put that on there just like that. And let's see, what else are we going to do with that one? I think I'll take a couple of these little bitty ones. I'm going to put one little bitty one right in the center of that gear there, like that. And then I'm going to take another little bitty one now these these gears, I think I got them from Wish. I either got them from Wish or AliExpress. I'm sure they both sell them. You get packages of them for much of nothing. So there's that one. Then let's see. Here's a pretty one that I was working on. And that is with some red and some black. I did red acrylic on it, and then I put some black uh, pin on it and filled in the holes on it. And then I used a little bit of black polish and wiped it down, and it gave that one a really cool effect. And I take a little bit of glue and put it around my little charm there and drop that on and slide it down so it don't cover the holes. See, these take on a personality all their own because the, the, the little charms will tell you where they want to be on the piece. And I let the charms tell me. I don't try to tell them, you know, boss them around too much. I mean, you can't have it hanging off the piece. <laughs> until it's barely hanging on. Well, I guess you could, but, you know, probably wouldn't look right. A little bit of glue on there. Not glue. Turn it over where you work better. There we go. Stick that on there like that. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it on there too. Well, well, if I get the glue flowing, I don't want to punch it too much or I'll have it all over me. You know, you ought to. There we go. Just a little bit, and I'm going to stick it on there just like that. Cool beans. All right. Got this red one here, and I was looking at it a little while ago, and it was telling me it wanted a key on it. <laughs> Does your art talk to you and tell you what it wants? Because my art talks to me and tells me what it would like. See, it wants that key right there like that. Then, a little heart that I had in my little crafter bowl said it wanted to be on there. A little drop of glue there and drop that 
part right in it. And now this one I'm going to boss a little bit because it is a heart and it needs to kind of be facing the right direction. There you go, little fella. That's much prettier. All right. Then I've got these little halfbacks, little pearl halfbacks. And I'm going to put just a little bit of glue up here on the corner of my heart. Or on, of my heart, my guitar pick. And I'm going to take it flat back and get it to roll over. Come on, don't go turtle on me. Well, is it arguing with me? Son of a gun. I think it is arguing with me. I ain't got my little tweezers out here to. There we go. Put one there. Be careful not to cover up the hole. Don't get your fingers in the glue. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my nails out of it. Well, there again. This is going to argue and I'm getting glue on me. See, now you shouldn't feel too bad because I know y'all go through the same thing that I'm going through here with your objects arguing with you from time to time. And you're thinking, oh, I bet this don't happen to other people. Yes, it does. It happens to every one of us. You get right over there where you're supposed to go. Now, don't be naughty. There you go. And I'll just poke them down real good into the glue. And they'll set up. Yeah. Get it up here a little bit so you can see what that looks like. See, it's distressed guitar pick. It's got some flat backs. It's got that little white pearl heart. And it's got a little key on there. And this sticking out from the side is the tape from underneath it. And when I get all done, I'll peel all the tape off the back. And then I'll put a coat of paint on the back of them, a couple of coats, and let it dry so that they look real pretty. But that started out as a white guitar pick. It shows you what the front of it looks like now after I got done with it. <laughs> I had a friend the other day say, what do you take perfectly good guitar picks messing up for? <laughs> but that's one way to to dress them up. And you put your uh, jump rings in the top of it. I think everybody knows how to put jump rings on. If you don't, leave me a comment. We'll get together. I'll show you how to put jump rings in. But I let them get all painted and dry and everything before I mess with jump rings. That's the last step that we do to them. Um, so that gives you an idea there on things that you can do. I mean, you, the sky's the limit on decorating them. Whatever strikes you. If you want to put some uh, little tiny ribbon to them, if you want to put some um, uh, applique pieces, little, you know, little chunks of applique like I showed you on those ones earlier. If you want to, um, let's see, my mind's going blank here. If you want to put blingy pieces on them, now I can get the, the bling box out here and pull some some pieces out of bling box. See here, I've got a, a white buffalo. You can put, a, put that on there. If you uh, wanted to go with bling, you know, make some of them real blingy. Put several of these little uh, flat back pieces like that on them. Put some flat back pearls a little bigger on them. Or you can use buttons on them. Um, just all kinds of things that you can put to them. Say, here's a bigger button if you wanted to put a bigger button to them. Now, I think, personally, I think that overweighs the, the guitar pick. Uh, but if you could find a flatter one than this, uh, that would be cool. Um, 
I mean, there's just all kinds of things you can put on there. Here's something that's a little flatter. You know, you can use a couple little pieces like that on there. I don't want them to be, you know, real bulky uh, and be like somebody pulling a millstone around their neck or something. But I like them to, to show up pretty and, uh, you know, be something somebody would be proud to wear. So that gives you some ideas on the decorating and how to do the guitar picks. And there again, I'll get a couple of these out that I've done earlier that are just the painted ones to show you what these look like. This one, I just put the little butterfly on the jump ring, put a little lace on there after it's all painted. And this one, I glue the key and some gears to it. Then after they're all done, go over them with some Mod Podge to, uh, to set them up good and to protect them. You could use clear nail polish too if you don't have Mod Podge. You can make your own Mod Podge. It's glue and water is about all it is. And uh, so that gives you some ideas on how to do the guitar picks. If you have any questions, you can leave me some comments. Don't forget to like and share if you like what I'm doing here. Uh, don't be afraid to let me know and um, share it. Share the tickets out of it so other people get to enjoy the crafts too and see what we do in the craft realm. I feel like we're out here in a little world all our own and you know, you get uh, <laughs> you get amongst other people that don't do craft and they think, well, what on earth are they doing uh, with all the glue and the paper and you know the stuff that they mess with? Well, this educates people and lets them know so they can join in on the fun as well. So with that said, uh, you know, don't forget to uh, pull up my Etsy channel. Look at the stuff that I've got on, on my Etsy uh, program. Don't, uh, don't hesitate to look me up on Facebook. I've got a page here on Facebook. It's brenda.gibson.71 in the Facebook search engine. will take you right to me. And uh, friend me on there. You can look me up on Google Plus. It's Brenda Gibson. And, uh, you know, get me up there. I'm a pretty easy person to find. You just leave comments and stuff here, your information, if you want me to get in touch with you for any reason. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get your questions answered. So with that said, I will bid you adieu. I hope you have a wonderful crafting day.